Hello, and welcome to Really Big Hat. My name is Jared, and this is D&D Builds. On this episode, we're going to be covering the Bard Barian, a warrior musician who gives a new meaning to the term slam poetry. So let's get started. First off, what is a Bard Barian? Well, the meaning is right there in the name. It's a multi-class between a bard and a barbarian. This character combines the brutal fury of a barbarian, rage and all, with the ability to inspire and sometimes support magically your allies. One of the fun things about this character is how open the roleplay is. You could be a typical wild living barbarian who has discovered that their primal chanting has magical properties, or you could just be a carnival singer who gets really pissed off and roughs up the customers when you fly into a blind rage. The world really is your oyster RP-wise when you're playing this character. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into the build. For our race, I've gone with a Triton. The main reason for that is our ability score increase. We get strength, constitution, and charisma each increased by one. And since these are our three most important attributes, that works out very well for us. In addition, we also get the amphibious trait, meaning we can breathe both air and water. And we get the control air and water feature. We can cast fog cloud with this trait, Starting at 3rd level, we can cast Gust of Wind with it, and starting at 5th level, we can cast Wall of Water with it. Once we cast any of these spells, we cannot cast that spell with this trait again until we finish a long rest. Charisma is our spellcasting ability for these spells. We also get 60 feet of Dark Vision, the Emissary of the Sea feature, which allows us to communicate with aquatic beasts, which is pretty handy, and we get Guardian of the Depths, which gives us resistance to cold damage. And last but not least, we can speak, read, and write, common, and primordial. So for our class, we are going to be beginning our career as a bard. But there are some decisions that need to be made before you actually land on which class you want to take. There is an equally compelling reason why you would want to start as a barbarian as opposed to a bard. And I will try to briefly go over the distinction here before I continue on. Basically, it's all going to come down to weapon and armor proficiencies, as well as skill proficiencies, how much you want of each, and when you're going to get them, and how you're going to make up for the deficit that you've created the other way, and that's going to come down to your bard subclass. So first off, let's look at the proficiencies the bard gets. We start out with light armor, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. We get three musical instruments, saving throws and dexterity and charisma, and three skills from the bardic skill list, which is a lot more diverse than the barbarian skill list. Whereas with a barbarian, you'd start out with light armor, medium armor, and shields, all simple and martial weapons, saving throws and strength and constitution, and two skills from the barbarian skill list, which, as I mentioned, is a lot less diverse than the bardic skill list. So the real question is, do you want to start out with medium armor and shields and all weapon proficiencies, as well as your saving throws in strength and constitution, or would you rather take three skills from a more diverse skill list, as well as the musical instruments, and saving throws in dexterity and charisma, while giving up the medium armor and shield proficiencies? And really, that question is going to answer whether or not you want to start as a bard or a barbarian. And... The remedy for each of those is in a different bardic subclass. So basically the way it's going to break down is, if you start as a barbarian, you're going to want to go into lore bard to stock up on all the extra skills you missed. Whereas if you start as a bard and then multiclass into barbarian later, your bardic subclass, you're going to want to go into valor bard to get the shield, medium armor, and martial weapon proficiencies. Of course, you'll already get shields and martial weapon proficiencies from multi-classing into Barbarian, but you get the medium armor that way. So the reason I've started with Bard is A, because I want extra skills right away from a more diverse skill list, and B, because I like the saving throws in Dexterity and Charisma a little bit better than Strength and Constitution. Constitution saves are usually good for casters, but since we're going to be raging a lot, we're not going to be concentrating on spells. Most of our spell casting is going to be out of combat, as support or utility spells, so we're not really going to be concentrating on a lot that's going to force us to make concentration saves. But, like I said, there are two sides to this coin, and there really isn't a right way. Gun to my head, I think I would probably say that going Barbarian into Bard is probably a little bit more optimized, since the skills that you get from Lore Bard more than make up for the ones that you'd miss out getting as a Barbarian. But it's all just a question of 
the feel of the character to you, and this one to me feels like I want to start as a bard. For our starting spells, we get two cantrips and four first level spells. I've gone with friends and message for the cantrips, just some utility cantrips to have in your back pocket. I've gone with charm person, disguise self, healing word, and thunder wave for our spells. Moving on to ability scores, I have once again gone with a point buy for all the reasons that it's a really good example of what you can do with any given character and it very effectively demonstrates where you want to put your most important stats. I've brought strength up to 15, which with our racial bonus will get to 16. I've left dexterity at 12. Constitution I've brought up to 13, which will get 14 with our racial bonus. Intelligence and wisdom I've both dropped to 8. And charisma I've brought up to 15, which will get to 16 with our racial bonus as well. And another thing I wanted to mention while I'm here is that having a little bit lower dexterity is another reason that I wanted to start as a bard who gets proficiency in dexterity saving throws. It helps cover that particular weakness. As a barbarian, we will be getting a feature that gives us advantage on dexterity saving throws in a wide variety of situations, so having advantage and proficiency helps make up for the lower score, as well as being able to equip medium armor, but that comes later. Your background is, as always, entirely up to you, but for this character, I've gone with the sailor background. I like the skill proficiencies in athletics and perception. I like having navigators tools and proficiency with water vehicles. I think as a Triton, it makes a lot of sense to be water affiliated and the sailor background is a good way to do that. Starting equipment, another category where you can really choose what you want, but for this character, I've gone with a long sword, a diplomat's pack, a loot, leather armor and a dagger, and then all of the sailor starting equipment. So here's our character sheet at level one. With 10 hit points and 12 armor class, we are very much going to be a backline combatant for our early level here. And once we become a barbarian, we can start getting into the front lines. But for first level here, you are a bard. So do keep that in mind and try not to do anything too reckless until you actually have reckless attack. At level two, we're going to multi-class into Barbarian, getting us proficiencies with shields and martial weapons, as well as access to rage and unarmored defense. Our unarmored defense calculation is currently stronger than basic leather armor, so unless you've already found studded leather, you can actually get this as a plus one to your armor class at this level. And just as a refresher on the properties of rage, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. When you make a melee weapon attack using your strength, you gain a bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gain levels as a barbarian. Currently, it's a plus two. And you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. However, if we're able to cast spells, which we are, we cannot cast them nor concentrate on them while we're raging. So that is something to keep in mind. However, we are able to bardically inspire people while we are raging. We can't do it on the same turn, since both are activated as a bonus action, but on subsequent turns after our rage, we can use our bonus action to give out inspiration. At level 2 of Barbarian, we get two impressive features in Reckless Attack and Danger Sense. Reckless Attack allows us to attack with advantage on our turn. Whenever we start making our melee weapon attacks, we can choose to attack recklessly, gaining advantage on all of our attacks in exchange for all attacks being made against us with advantage until the start of our next turn. With Danger Sense, we get the ability to have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects we can see, such as traps and spells, as long as we aren't blinded, deafened, or otherwise incapacitated. It is at this point in our career where I would highly, highly recommend making the upgrade to a great axe, a great sword, or a maul if you haven't done so already. Because, spoiler alert, in a couple of levels we are going to be taking Great Weapon Master to take advantage of our advantage. At level 3 of Barbarian, we get the Primal Knowledge optional class feature, which allows us to take another skill proficiency from the Barbarian skill list. We also get access to our Primal Path. And for this build, I've gone with Path of the Zealot. This gets us a couple features. First off is Divine Fury. Starting when we choose our path at third level, we can channel Divine Fury into our weapon strikes. While we're raging, the first creature we hit on each of our turns with a weapon attack takes extra damage equal to 1d6 plus half our Barbarian level. This extra damage is either Necrotic or Radiant, and we get to choose the type of damage when we gain this feature. 
I've gone with Radiant, but you can take whatever you want. It really doesn't matter all that much, depending on what kind of campaign you're in. If you're up against a lot of creatures that are resistant to Necrotic or Radiant in your campaign, and you know that, definitely pick the other one. We also get Warrior of the Gods. At third level, our soul is marked for endless battle. If a spell, such as Raise Dead, has the sole effect of restoring us to life, but not undeath, the caster doesn't need material components to cast the spell on us. This can come in quite handy. At fourth level of Barbarian, we pick up an ability score improvement, and I'm going to use that to take the Great Weapon Master feat. This has two key features. First, on our turn, when we score a critical hit with a melee weapon, or reduce a creature to zero hit points with one, we can make a melee weapon attack as a bonus action. Now, our bonus action is a lot of times already spoken for, so this element of it may not come up quite as much. However, we also get another feature, which is before we make a melee attack with a heavy weapon that we're proficient with, we can choose to take a minus 5 penalty to the attack roll, and if the attack hits, we add plus 10 to the attack's damage. This pairs incredibly well with our reckless attack feature, which gives us advantage on our weapon attacks. Taking a minus 5 penalty with advantage hurts a lot less than taking a minus 5 penalty without advantage. This feat is almost a must-have for Barbarians due to that feature. At level 5 of Barbarian, we get extra attack, allowing us to attack twice instead of once whenever we take the attack action on our turn. We also get fast movement. Our speed increases by 10 feet while we aren't wearing heavy armor. At character level 7, we're going to wrap back around for level 2 of Bard. This gets us the Magical Inspiration optional class feature. If a creature has a Bardic Inspiration die from us and casts a spell that either restores hit points or deals damage, that creature can roll the die and choose a target affected by the spell, and add the number rolled as a bonus to the hit points regained or the damage dealt. We also get Jack of All Trades, where we can add half our proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check we make that doesn't already include our proficiency bonus. And we get Song of Rest, where we can use soothing music to help revitalize our wounded allies during a short rest. If we, or any friendly creatures who can hear us, regain hit points at the end of the short rest by spending one or more hit dice, each of those creatures regains an extra 1d6 hit points, and the extra hit points increase when we reach certain levels in Bard. At level 3 of Bard, we get to pick our Bard at College, and we are going with the College of Valor. This gives us proficiency with medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. We already had shields and martial weapons, but now we have medium armor proficiency. We also get a new way to use our inspiration die, Combat Inspiration. At third level, we learn to inspire others in battle. A creature that has a bardic inspiration die from us can roll that die and add the number rolled to a weapon damage roll it made. Alternatively, when attack roll is made against that creature, it can use its reaction to roll the bardic inspiration die and add the number rolled to its AC against the attack. I don't need to tell you that both of those can come in pretty clutch. We also get expertise at this level, allowing us to choose two of our skill proficiencies and double our proficiency bonus for any ability check we make that uses either of the chosen proficiencies. For our spells at level 3, I have picked up Invisibility with the spell that we would naturally learn at level 3, and I have also picked up Mirror Image by retraining the spell we would have got at level 2 that I never covered because I knew I'd be retraining it out. What's especially fun about Mirror Image is that it has a casting time of one action and a duration of one minute that is not concentration. Since we technically won't be concentrating on this spell, we can cast Mirror Image and then go into our rage, and it'll still be up. At level 4 of Bard, we get an ability score improvement, and I'm going to use that to increase our strength score. And for our spell choice at level 4, I'm going to pick up Aid. This is another clutch spell that doesn't require concentration, so its effects can be active while we're raging. At level 10, we're going to jump back to level 6 of Barbarian, where we get Fanatical Focus. Starting at 6th level, the divine power that fuels our rage can protect us. If we fail a saving throw while we're raging, we can re-roll it and must use a new roll. We can use this ability once per rage. At level 7 of Barbarian, we get the Instinctive Pounce optional class feature, where as part of the bonus action we take to enter our rage, we can move up to half our speed. And we also get Feral Instinct, where we have advantage on initiative rolls, and additionally, if we are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, we can act normally on our first turn, but only if we enter rage before doing anything else. At level 8 of Barbarian, we get an ability score improvement, and I'm going to use that to cap out our strength score. 
at level 9 of Barbarian, we get Brutal Critical, allowing us to roll one additional weapon damage die when determining the extra damage for a critical hit with a melee attack. At level 10 of Barbarian, and our final level in this class, we get another instance of the Primal Knowledge optional class feature, allowing us to get proficiency in another Barbarian skill. We also get Zealous Presence, where we learn to channel divine power to inspire zealotry in others. As a bonus action, we can unleash a feral battle cry infused with divine energy. Up to 10 other creatures of our choice within 60 feet of us that can hear us gain advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the start of our next turn. And we can use that once per long rest. Jumping back to level 5 of Bard, we get Font of Inspiration, allowing us to regain all of our expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when we finish a short rest. We also get access to a third level spell, and I have gone with Mass Healing Word. This is a bit of a tricky spell for us to use, since it uses our bonus action, which is already in competition with both Rage and Bardic Inspiration, and we can't cast it while we're raging, so it's not going to be as much of an in-battle pick-me-up, but it's a useful thing to have, and sometimes healing is just too clutch to pass up. At level 6 of Bard, we get access to Counter Charm, which is actually a really tricky feature to use. As an action, we can start a performance that lasts until the end of our next turn, and during that time, we and any friendly creatures within 30 feet of us have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Creature must be able to hear us to gain this benefit, and the performance ends early if we are incapacitated or silenced, or if we voluntarily end it. At level 6, we also get access to another spell, and I have gone with Dispel Magic. At level 7 of Bard, we get access to 4th level spells, and I have gone with Polymorph. Again, this is something we're probably not going to be casting in combat, although we could if we wanted to, you know. It's always a boon to have another character that can turn into a T-Rex if you want when the mood strikes you. But do keep in mind that you can't rage and concentrate on a spell, so you're going to have to choose between those. But you could turn someone into a T-Rex with your action and then bardically inspire them with your bonus action, so there's always that. And there are always out-of-combat applications for Polymorph in both Exploration and Stealth, which are not to be overlooked. At level 8 of Bard, we get an Ability Score Improvement, and I'm actually going to use this to bump up our Constitution. You could make an argument for Charisma here, but I would actually argue against that, since very few of our spells require anyone to make saving throws, and none of our spells require us to make attack rolls, our Charisma doesn't really fold into our spellcasting all that much. Add to that the fact that we can't even cast spells while we're raging, and we still want to be doing that more often than not, and Charisma isn't quite as important here. We also get another spell at this level, and I have gone with Dimension Door. It's a nice teleportation spell, and can be really clutch in a pinch. At level 9 of Bard, we get access to 5th level spells, and I have picked up Mass Cure Wounds. At level 10 of Bard and our Capstone, first we get Expertise in 2 more skills, and then we get Magical Secrets, which allow us to plunder two spells from any other spell list. I've gone with Find Greater Steed and Revivify, but I would recommend that you go through the spell list yourself and just pick what speaks to you. And so here we are at level 20. We have a wide variety of ways to support the party, whether magically or with Bardic Inspiration, and we have a wide variety of ways to chop and slash our enemies into tiny little pieces while raging. So, I hope you enjoy the build, and have fun.